son of a legend. Pressure like, makes diamonds. Yeah. Okay. Pressure makes diamonds, you know? So if there's no pressure, then everyone's relaxed and comfortable. I like pressure. I thrive on it and I perform better from it. Yeah. Tim, uh, you, you seem to be very easy going. Uh, what, what, what makes you tick, man? What, what drives Tim Zoo? What drives me? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, as soon as I get in the ring, I love to punch on. Yeah. That's it, you know? I love to, I like to inflict damage. I like to inflict pain and um, there'll be plenty of pain. Next seek and destroy. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Quite yeah. simple. Yeah. Seek and destroy. Yeah. You mentioned uh, going back to Dewey Cooper. Uh, are you going to be able to maybe teach Francis and Gallo some maybe <laughs> new punch techniques? <laughs> Bro, I don't think he needs any teaching, man. He's, he's, he's got enough power. You know what I mean? He needs to get taught any technique. <laughs> have, have you had the chance of meeting him while, while you've been here? Francis? Yes. No, no, man. We we arrived last Saturday, so we oh, haven't okay. been here for too long. So yeah. And mentioning power, just because you're leading off the early PBC schedule, and you also have Tank and Rolly. Yeah. Another. <laughs> you have any thoughts on, on Tank and Rolly? <laughs> Man, I'm a big fan of Tank. I love the, I love his style. I love his um, left uppercut. You know, if he gets to land that, then uh, Rolly, Rolly, he's in a in a world of trouble. Are you assuming that Tank's going to win the fight? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. Who do you think? Who, who do you think uh, gives them the toughest fight at, at lightweight at 135 pounds? Obviously, George, uh, Tank. You, you said you're a big fan. All of All right, Tank. yeah. You know, obviously George is there, Devin Haney's there, Ryan yeah, Garcia's look, there. Man, all the all the contenders and and George as the champion are, are all top level, man. All world level, you know. Yeah. So they're all up there. Uh, but Lomachenko, I think, is something special. Mm. Would you say the same thing in, in your skill set that you want to add to that will get you to that next level that you're from where you're already at right now? What's that? Would you say there's anything you want to add in your skill set? Oh, everything, man. Everything. I'm 27 years old. Um, I've got plenty of learning to do. I live and breathe this sport. You know, there's there's so much more to learn. There's so much more to experience, and the whole journey is just it's fun. It, it seems like that you've already bought a big kind of stadium life there. Right? Does it feel different coming over here? Like I know that mm. the crowd, you're already used to the media and things like that. Mm. But if you like bought at like the MGM or the, the big arenas that they advertise back in the day, yeah, yeah. does it add a little more pressure or it just feels not like you already? No, look, I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel pressure, man. Honestly, I just block it out. I don't, I don't, I don't feel it. It's just I love this whole, this whole process and. This is a new chapter for me, you know. Even seeing all you guys, this is new faces to me, you know. Yeah. Usually, I'm, I'm used to the same old media, I'm used to the same old gyms, the same old climate, the same old weather, everything, you know. Now I'm at Mandalay Bay, where I've been watching my whole life in Vegas. I've been watching Mayweather videos, Mayweather 24/7, and I'm at the gym sparring where everyone's screaming. Um, I'm in front, of, yeah, you know. And it's it's just this is this is what I live for, you know. This is unreal, you know. I could be back home in Australia, sitting in my apartment right now, or I'm here in Vegas, preparing for the fight of my life. This is this one. You know, in Australia, upwards of 50,000 people potentially in a stadium fight. What would that mean just to, for Australian boxing? Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's great for Australian boxing, you know? It's, everyone's excited back in Australian boxing, you know? And if I, if I can get these straps um, to Australia as well and do a stadium like that, that's, that'd be unreal. I, I know you may have touched on it before I got here, but Charlo Castano now obviously has has a date May 14th. Um, I'm sure you saw the the first the first fight they had last summer. How do you see the rematch play out based on what you saw? Yeah, I think look in my eyes, I think um, Castano wins um, just his work rate, um, but I think Charlo's in the right mindset, so. Anything can happen. Does Charlo, you know, with his height and athleticism, have more room to make adjustments than Castano? You know, yeah, for, yeah. I think the adjustments could be made more from from Charlo's side. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't. His work rate's not as high as um, Castano. So, you know, if you if you watch um, most of the rounds, uh, Castano is dominating. It's Charlo's that's landing the, the cleaner, and bigger shots. I guess most importantly, are you going to show up to the fight? Are you going to be attending? Yeah, them? hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll get, get ourselves there. It'll be good. Tim, uh, I don't know if you know me, but you have a, a great big Mexican fan base. Uh, and your family have a story with, with the best Mexican ever. Yeah. So what can you tell to the Mexican fans? For, because for us, the boxing is a religion. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, um, the Mexican fans are crazy, man, and I, and I absolutely love them, you know. Some of my favorite fighters ever were Mexican, Julio Cesar Chavez. Yeah. Uh, loved watching. I was actually watching his fight um, today um, in the morning. Uh, just 
you know, it, it's great to have the support of the Mexicans, you know, hopefully, yeah, it's great. It Is there like any Mexican in your future, like a target any that you want to fight with? Um, in the future, any Mexican that you... There? There? I mean, Munguia. Munguia could be. Oh, Munguia. Munguia could yeah, be. Yeah. Took a few of his leftovers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, who else is there? That's it. Munguia in the future, man. In, uh, Norway will be. Honduras, Mexican.